We remember those quotes. <laughs> and we are live, folks. Welcome to the Sit Down Standard, the podcast celebrating all the amazing things you can do while sitting, whether it's enjoying movies, watching television, or playing games. I am one of your hosts, David Bray. I am joined, as always, by the man who has been blocked by the White House at press conferences, Gerald Bales. Hello, David. Are you upset about it? Pretty upset. Yeah? You yeah. need to get that access. Need to talk to DJT. I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, this week <laughs> we were coming just audio only um, due to some family things. Let's I be honest. No one wants to see our faces. Uh, that's what it was. We you get know? like five views every week. <laughs> no, no one cares. We get emails that are just like, just audio, please. Stop, please, yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, but you can always check out our uh, podcast on all of those services that are available out there, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and the Google Play Store. Um, and of course, you can always send us an email too. Sitdownstandard at gmail.com. It's weird because we're like looking at each other. Oh, we're like, me, this is like, look away. Look, look, look away, away, David. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but let's catch up with, because we went, we missed last week, so we got a lot of stuff to cover this week in What You Doing, What You Doing, What You Doing, what you doing? Just audio. <laughs> audio. Whoa. Audio. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gerald, what you doing, man? A couple things. Uh, I don't know if you know, we, we live in Vegas um, in this new... It's called the 702. For 702. All... Um, Do you remember that band 702 for a little no. bit? It was like a girl band? No. You don't remember that? Oh, okay. Hold I don't on. listen to girl band. Now that we have audio only, I'm going to go pull up the song. But go ahead. Get, keep, <laughs> I'll play it for you. All right, all right. <laughs> um, a new stadium. You know, here in Vegas, we have a couple... Of, we're in a desert. So seeing aquatic wildlife is very difficult to come by that's true you know we're in a freaking desert so and you can't really go to lake mead it's just disgusting over there there's no wildlife living in those waters let's be honest um so you have shark reef which is pretty cool right at the, the mandalay bay yeah. resort and casino we've been there and we've talked about that you have uh the dolphin uh, exhibit at the mirage and the t- the white oh, tiger is yeah i haven't still there? seen that in forever no i haven't it's i think it's still there i know one uh, of the tigers should, shouldn't be let's, let's say that roy or something like that yeah like years ago like decades ago David. so a new <laughs> state-of-the-art aquarium finally opened up in the greater las vegas area at the boulevard mall <laughs> and uh if you don't know that's like our crappy mall well one of ma- one of many crappy malls let's no, just say that's there. The... but it's it's the it's on the lower end of the crappy everybody mall. has every city has a bad mall Usually it's like the mall that has like um no Apple Store for one. You're not going to see an Apple Store <laughs> in these malls. Let's be honest. Okay, keep going. They're going to have like a Salvation Depot attached to it. You know what I mean? Or Salvation Army, whatever it's called. Goodwill. It's got like a Jiffy Lube attached to it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's called the Sequest Aquarium. And if you're looking for state of the art, just open, Dave. It's brand new. If you're looking for state of the art aquatic creatures in the middle of the desert, you should not go here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um. Uh, it's 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 definitely cool. It's cool. Um, it's a more of a hands-on exhibit. So like toward the end of it, they have like you Wait, know like for water. Yeah. When you how do you put you know, the fish don't like that. No no no. I mean like the like the touchy feely fish like the star the starfish. Oh okay. So it's just a all that stuff. Bunch of shallow. Well, that's water. a big of the area, but that's what it's mainly for. But they do have tanks, but it looks kind of like a Petco where they have like tanks of like fish and stuff in oh, it. Oh jeez. Um, it's they like have a uh, yeah they have a mermaid that's just kind of chilling there <laughs> that you could take a picture with. <laughs> It's weird. We were talking to her because Sarah, of course, wanted a picture with her because you know, it's, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm like, do you do you like do this all day? And she's like, oh, you know, I used to do eight hour shifts, but I cut back to like four hour shifts. But she would just sit there on the ground with her tail and just take pictures with people. So wait a second, is it so? It's it's in the mall. In the mall. And is it like big? Like, or is it the size of? Like, give me like is it like a Spencer's gifts? Is it like that? No, size? it's not that small. I would say like three of those. Okay, so you're talking like a. So, okay, remember Shark Reef, right? Where they kind of have it divided. So it's like, oh, you're in the Amazon. Here's this. So they have that. They have like separate rooms. And they have like, this is the California coast. And they have these kind of creatures. But it's just, <laughs> it's kind of, it is, it is. I put in my notes, quote unquote, aquarium, kind of sad. Are all the fish really sad? Yeah, kind of. Do they have a gift shop at the end? They do have it uh, at the beginning. Well, there you go. You exit the same way you came in, in the gift shop. There you end. go. Um, bunch of kids around or no? Bunch of kids. It is kind of cool for that. Like, I mean, if you, if your kid wants to be, like, oh wow, I want to look well, at a so starfish. So, There's only a few places you can go. Well, so. that and it's inside a mall, so it's yeah. like, oh hey, we're at the mall. How much is it? Um, it's I want to say it's like thirty bucks a what? person. No, no, no. It's sixteen dollars a person. But we got if you bought online, you get one buy one get one free. Yeah, see, that's... and it, it, any more than that, I would have scoffed like, it. Thirty bucks a person. I was like, good lord. Yeah, yeah. They do have annual passes though, David. For some reason, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're in the Las Vegas area and you want your kids to touch a fish, you know that they can't go, go to the Shark Reef. <laughs> go, <laughs> go to the Mandalay Bay. Go to the Boulevard Mall. Uh, so that a um, couple of things. A new Pokemon Go update came out. Real David. quick though, hold yes. on before we move off of that. Were, were you an aquarium kid? Like, I mean, not aquarium from like going. Did you have fit like a 
aquarium at your house. You know, everyone has like goldfish. F- yeah, yeah. Um, when I grew up, um, I want to say we did. I don't really remember it. Like but a fish bowl is all you had. Well, when um, when I moved down on my own, and then Sarah and I got an apartment when we moved to California in Corona, we bought a ten gallon fish tank. See, okay, it's weird to me the whole owning fish thing. So it's cool because like we first we had it actually we we did have it in the house here in uh vegas when i live with dan but um it's cool because like we had it first in our bedroom and you get the sound of the filter and like the bubbling it's very (laughs) soothing and the fish look cool i mean we did fresh water we didn't do anything crazy but then excuse me (laughs) after the first like two months of owning it then you gotta start doing the maintenance yeah, the and tank gets filthy. The maintenance is worse. <laughs> yeah, and you, of course. you gotta clean the tank. You gotta change water. You gotta get those fish that suck off the stuff off the side of the glass. Do you know how hard it is to change water, David? You have to change two thirds of the water like every month, every two months. Why is it so hard? Because you gotta take. It's a ten gallon tank, David. Can't you siphon it out, or like, doesn't there like a like a thing to pull? I don't know, trap door, if you will. <laughs> no, there's no trap door. You, just you break have the to take it out in like big bowls. Oh. Or you you can they have like the tube things, but you gotta like take the tube all the way to like a bathroom or something so it like, can go somewhere. Um, so that was kind of annoying. Um, we but in our freshwater fish, we did have little uh, I forgot what they're like little tiny crabs. <laughs> I forgot what kind of crabs they are. They're, they're cute. And they're like little you and had stuff. Crabs? Yeah, well, I had cra- <laughs> crabs. <laughs> even. No, but um, these crabs. <laughs> when we got them at Petco, like the guy was like, "Make sure the top of your tank is closed because these crabs will get out. They will get out, David." Hmm. So we had like there was an opening where the filter was because you can't enclose it completely. So we had foil over it to keep it closed. One day, a crab was gone. <laughs> where did he go? Yeah. So as we were moving out, <laughs> oh, no. we found like a crusty crab. No. Yeah, no SpongeBob reference, but um, that's terrible. Under one of the couches, we were moving the couch or something. It's like, he oh, he made, he made it all the way there, yeah, from our bedroom. That's so terrible. So never had crabs again. After no that. homeward bound for him. Yeah, <laughs> never made it home. Um, but yeah, I mean, fish tanks are cool. He was like, I mean, I'm gonna go to the sea. <laughs> if you're prepared with the maintenance, if Sarah and I have always talked about like, oh, we want to get a fish tank again, but like one, we would get it like we would get a decent sized tank, and then we would. We would only get it if we had the money to pay for someone to maintain it for us because it's just a pain. Right. You got to get Deuce Bigelow. <laughs> yes. There's David. a reference there, buddy. Go ahead. Keep going. Um. So anyway, so yeah, that's our aquarium talk. Pokemon Go update, David. Yes. Big news if you're a fan of Pokemon Go. Speaking of aquatic life. Yeah. They, in uh, Vegas. They put out 80 new uh, Pokemon monsters, pocket monsters. Yes. Uh, from the second generation of games in now, the world. Now, when did you fall off? What generation were you no longer paying attention? Um, so, like, even this generation, like, I know all, for the 151, of I know, back of my hand. Of right? course back you Back of my hand. Of David. course you did. I wasn't going to, I'm not here to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. So, like, I played the second generation games, and I played the third generation games, and I, I fell off after that. So, I know, like, the starters, and, like, some of, like, the first few Pokemon, you know, of both those generations, but in terms of, like, the whole, like, I don't know the names of all 80. But weren't they getting lazy? Towards, I mean, it's kind of like... No, like now, they're on like 7th gen. There's like, oh, look, there's a Sandcastle Pokemon. There's a Sword Pokemon. Like, it's crazy. Oh, it's just an- inanimate objects that yeah, they've turned into much, Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have eyes. Oh, it's a Pokemon. Um, this is a paperclip. They're like, that's from Microsoft Office. <laughs> <laughs> right? So they added 80 new monsters. Um, they did some slight differences to the catching mechanics, and now they move side to side now. They added new berries to the game. Um, so they have three different berries. You know, it's kind of, it's cool. It's enough. You know, it's, it keeps people coming back to be like, oh, now you want it. Now Sarah and I are back to like trying to compete to to get the most. You know, in your decks and stuff. And but the this, the the basic mechanics are all the same. Right. The fighting is just tapping until you win. Yeah, yeah. And they've revealed that they're they're working on. Yeah, do something. Some changes. Yeah. Come on. I mean, this is enough though for now. It's been what almost a year. When did this thing come out? April. June. Yeah, it's almost been a year. Come on, guys. What are you doing? Just counting coins. Those Pokemon well, it's coins. It's been like eight months, seven months. Yeah, maybe. and they haven't done... They've made the monsters move side to side. Come on. No, it's it's fine for right now, but they're, they'll, it just shows they're, they're, still, they're still doing updates to the platform. Is the idea like to do a Pokemon Go 2, or is it just going to just... No, they'll probably just keep putting more generations and generations in there. Um, so that's that. Nothing really more to Has say. Anyone, is anyone going to try to copy that you know like every you know it's like the lows of home depot right is someone going to do a pokemon go with some other ip I'm, Yu-Gi-Oh I'm, go? Sh- I'm sure but it's like you can't get the popularity of Yu-Gi-Oh pokemon. is pretty popular it's not pokemon popular, it's even man. has the go in it yeah but it doesn't have like the games it just has the cards and the stupid show that's what i think pokemon was before the seven po- eye drag white dragon <laughs> right blue know. eyes I, white dragon was like the, the, the just... legit kind of thing <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't understand why someone doesn't copy the, the method. 
No, it well, won't I be mean, as popular, obviously, but yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. anything will be as popular as Pokemon Go for for the time period right after it came out. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I just don't think it could beat that. So that's that. Okay. Um, PS4 update. Going through these old games. That's right. We caught last time we caught up with you. You had finished God of War two. God of no. Well, you also finished um, the Uncharted one two and the first Uncharted game. Uncharted one. Yes. And did you f- have you finished um, Last of Us? So no, I haven't. I started playing Last of Us, but I never finished it. I haven't finished it yet. Okay. So I finished God of War. Okay. So I finished God of War two. I went to um, the next game in like the um, I guess when it, the release order. The Skipping canon. All the yeah, the canon. Yeah. Um, was God of War Ascension, which is a prequel. Played it for a little bit and then stopped playing it. From what I read, it's the worst of the console iterations. So I just didn't. I'm like, I'm just. I got a lot of games to get there. Come on. Yeah. So I skipped that. I bought the remastered version of God of War three on PS4. It was like twenty bucks, and I played through that and I beat it. See, I, I don't think I could play. You're playing like that's a lot of God of War back because the game becomes towards the end. It's literally button mash. Um, and I don't know yeah. if I could continue to do that for three games in a row. Like because I played them as they were released. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Like I've I've been I haven't played like God of War and then two then three like I've been playing these other games in between yeah um to kind of keep it fresh so I'm not it's not stale God of War three is very very good I think God of War three from my recollection of it it has the most weapons like there's a yeah very so you have like the 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 bare fist that you steal from Hercules dude like you kill all these gods man yeah they, brutal, brutal 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 like murdering. Hercules you steal the little lion fist that he has and yeah. you just punch him punch him to death yeah, until the, the floor <laughs> breaks <laughs> yeah and like... you see him like later his body floating and there's just no face <laughs> It's like Jesus well because they dude. have to ratchet up the violence uh, yeah, each yeah. iteration of these games because it's like oh well, <clears throat> last game we only tore it we only bloodied his nose now we gotta rip off his face and of course I think we talked about this last time but there's like yeah, naked and every game there's like a naked limit it's like a quick time event to bang this chick and What's Sarah's like- there watching like crocheting <laughs> and she's like what are you playing it's oh Kratos <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's like the Medusa characters are always like topless. It's like it's just gratuitous. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And like that's the point of the game. Like it's self-aware and it's it's fine. Yeah, I guess it's self-aware. I don't know if it's that self-aware. It is. I tend to. Think it's not it's, taking itself too seriously. I don't know. I still think it's kind of silly. But anyway, I, but like the story, me, right? It's one of those things where it's like, oh, do I, I want to play this with the door closed? Like you know what I mean? It's it makes you feel weird as an adult. Yeah, exactly. When you're 16, who cares? You're like, ah, boobies. Yeah, but you turn on the volume so your parents can't hear it. Whatever, you know? they're not going to come in. <laughs> yeah, oh, Kratos. Anyways. Um, but they pan away, at least. Oh, he, like, breaks the bed in one of them, right? That's God of War 2. Oh, God. He breaks the bed. But in God of War 3, like, you bang Aphrodite. And then she has, like, when you walk into the room, it's Aphrodite and two other chicks. Like, so yeah. it's like a three-way chick thing. Yeah. And then Kratos walks in. They're like, oh, we'll let you do your thing. So then... It slides over, pans over while you're banging Aphrodite, and then like her two friends are in a corner, giggling, of course, like top of like giggling and stuff, and then they get so turned on by what you're doing to Aphrodite, so they go, stupid. "It's it's stupid." But in terms of like the story, like of the you game, know what's funny to me is like someone pitched that to like the game creator. He's like, "Okay, we have this great idea. Okay, everyone loved it when Kratos broke the bed in the second game. <laughs> what are we gonna do to up that? Lesbians making out? <laughs> yeah, you know. it's like no, it's ridiculous. Just put a porn right. scene in at this point. You know what I mean? Like, just go. You know, let's do. Why but like, not? But like the storyline game is like really cool, and it. I mean, regardless of like that ridiculousness. And I'm wondering but... when does the when does the where does the rating change? Right? Because because I think it was um. God, what was that game? Manhunt? Do you remember this game? Mm-hmm. It got banned in a bunch of countries. Yeah. It was you on Wii. Will you put it? Yeah, I know. That's the worst thing because you're using yeah, you would the put Wiimote like, to like stab people or hit people with a hammer. Well, and, the one, the worst one was the, <clears throat> one of the weapons you would have is like a plastic bag and you would walk up behind somebody and put it over their head and like yeah. struggle. Yeah, anyways, but that got banned in a bunch of countries, but I think they were they were so close to a, t- or a rating of NC-17. I don't know if it's the same. It's AO, adults only. Is the next who, one up for men. But has, any, has anything been AO? That I that you know of, um, San Andreas got bumped up to an AO after the whole hot coffee thing. That's why they had to pull it from shelves. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like at a certain point, like just wh- what is the difference between mature and AO? Like you know what I mean? Like the rating. I mean porn, <laughs> <laughs> like the stuff you see on it? Steam and stuff with like the weird anime. Crap yeah, of course. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Wait. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but uh, very good game. Um, he kills himself at the end. Spoiler. Of course, stabs himself with uh, the crazy sword of Olympus. So yeah. uh, so. Uh, We'll What's Zeus's not Zeus's wife? What's the Hera? Yeah, Hera is his wife. But the chick at the end is it Helena or? Yeah, Helena's his daughter. No, there's the who's the goddess that killed that you accidentally stabbed in God of War two. The you, main chick. That was like eight years oh. ago for me. All I don't right. Know. Anyway, anyway, so like I'll just start you, naming you it. Aphrodite's uh, Helena, Artemis. No. Um. Uh, name? I think it's Apollo. It's a it's no, a girl. It's, Hera. It's a 
See, the problem is that they have like two different names. They have like, they you know, anyways. It's anyway, fine. it doesn't matter. But it's a very cool storyline. And then like he kills himself, and that's the end, right? Credits roll, and then of course after the credits, the end credit scene where you see the blood trailing off, right? So it's like, oh, he lived. So anyway, so there was. I, I didn't see, I knew there was a new God of War game coming out for PS4, like all, it's the only, it's the first like PS4 God of War Shows game. Shows him having like a kid. Yeah, and it's like, so like, I didn't watch that trailer, I knew of it, I yeah. wanted to finish these games first. So like that takes, obviously Kratos is alive, right, he didn't die. And he has like a full on beard. Yeah, full like, Jack, we have to go back from lost beard, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like full man beard, but still no no head hair. But, um, and, but it's in like Nordic stuff too, Yeah, it's- which is freaking cool. So uh, I'm really excited to see wonder, where that is, goes. Is David Jaffe making that one? I don't know who that is. He's the guy who made all these games. Oh, okay, sorry. He's he's from Twisted Metal. That's his big claim to fame. Oh, really? Yeah, he made all those games, and then he made God of War. He made a couple other games, Calling All Cars. There's a bunch of games that he's made. He's a good, he's a big designer. He's like Sid Meier or something like that. Yeah, I don't know when it's out this year, but I'm really looking <laughs> forward to that. Um, when does that come out? Do you know? I literally just said I don't know when that comes out this year, but I hope it's good. Um, but yeah, that looks really good. I'm really looking forward to that. So right now I'm playing Uncharted 2. I'm almost done with that. That's the, that's Among my thieves. favorite. That's my favorite one. The, yeah, just, um, the it's with is, the dagger. Yeah, the ending is very weird. I think game. I'm towards the end of the game. The ending is very, very weird. Which, which makes it, I So like, like I've, heard, okay, so I've heard, like, the first game had those kind of supernatural elements at the, like the zombie Nazi things or whatever they were. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, so, like, each of these games, like, it's so cool because it's, like, based on realism, and then the end, like, goes super weird. Yeah, this is, like, the Crystal but, Skull problem with Indiana Jones. Yeah. Like, that's not what... But at the same time, like, the Arctic Covenant, right? The melts your face. So, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some sci-fi built into the, the what you know, what they're looking at to make these games. So, yeah, that's fine. And, like, Tomb Raider is kind of the same thing, right? The first Tomb Raider game, or, like, the the new reboot. I didn't finish. Had some supernatural thing. Wait, did I end. beat the first one? Yeah, I beat the first one. Don't tell me about the second one. I haven't played it yet. But it had, like, remember, like, the queen, the storm. They couldn't leave without defeating the queen. Yeah. The sacrifice. Yeah, see, it gets kind of... Anyways. Um, so, yeah, I'm playing Uncharted 2 right now, and then after that, I'll either jump into 3 or I'll finish Last of By Us. By the way, God, the new God of War is not David Jaffe. So, interesting. I think that'll be the first one that's not... It still is the same studio, Santa Monica Studios for Sony. Yeah, the one Sony owns, yeah. Yep. Um, so... But that, that's what I... Remember we were talking about this a little while ago. We, or Nintendo should do this. Go buy studios mm-hmm. and then just make have them make your games. Yep. Anyways, this is an example. The well, Switch is coming out in like next week. Yeah, they, they reviewed it. I saw it on a bunch yeah, of... Yeah, I've heard some things. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, let's uh, just say, so you'll see your just on Sanders' review of the Switch maybe when I... I'll probably buy it in the holidays. I'm not going to get it now. No? No. But I really want to play Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I saw the some more trailers of it or video gameplay of it. And yeah, I'm trying to stay away from all that, but I don't know really if I can good. hold off. But anyways, um, the, one of the other things I did, I finished reading uh, Ahsoka, which is a novel that takes place, tells the story of Ahsoka Tano. Takes Star Wars. Place, yeah, Star Wars, guys. It's Star Wars. Um, it takes place uh, after she leaves the Jedi Order in Clone Wars until where you meet her in Rebels. So it kind of takes place. Wait, until you meet her in R- Rebels? Yeah, remember the, the TV oh, show Rebels? Oh, okay. I didn't watch. She's Fulcrum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clone Wars. So Clone Wars, at the end of Clone Wars, she's kicked out of the Jedi Order. Yep. And the reason for that is because... She got framed for a bomb, and then it was revealed that she didn't do it at the end, and everyone's like, oh, well, we're sorry we blamed you. Come back. And she's like, no. Like, I thought we were a family, and you guys blamed me, even though I told you from the very beginning it wasn't me, so... Well, how did she get framed? Was there, like, a video? Uh, I don't remember. Space right. video? I'm still rewatching those episodes. Oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> So, anyways, this is between her fall from grace from the Jedi Order to when we yeah. meet her again in Rebels. So, what was exactly. going on? Uh, Hold well, on. she's. Let's do. Can you do it without spoiling it? No. Okay. You literally spoil- just said, "Tell me what happens." No, I know, but I mean, you could tell me and like, "Oh, this is the adventure." Yeah, anyways, but spoiler alert: if you're not going to read the, if you're going to read the book, you know. Leave. Yeah, I'll be vague. I mean, I'll be. You no, know, no, I'll- go ahead, go into it now. <clears throat> so, like, she's uh, after Order sixty six happens. Obviously, Jedi or you mean. Order 60. <laughs> Execute Order 60. <laughs> Anyways, um, so obviously it's not good to be a Jedi. So yeah. this is her uh, going from planet to planet pretty much um, as far into the outer rim as she can away from Empire's influence to try to get away. Um, she ends up finding this old moon that has like a farming thing on it that she tries to settle in on. Um, Empire comes because they're trying to take advantage of the farmland to grow and they're pretty much like working them as slaves. Yeah, gotta have resources. Um, Come on. She's feel bad for she feels bad for these people, but she doesn't want to reveal herself, obviously. Uh it turns out she accidentally reveals herself trying to save somebody. An inquisitor is sent there. You remember the inquisitor from yes, Rebels? From Rebels. But my question, like you know you can fight without like revealing your lightsaber. Like pick up a stick. 
Yeah, but it's not the lightsaber that gives her away. It's her force powers and stuff like that. So don't use force powers. Yeah, that's the point. But like a lot of what makes a Jedi a Jedi is their force. Yeah, powers but they stuff. also are good to hand to hand combat. No, no, I know. But like in, during this thing is like she's trying to organize like a guerrilla resistance against these empire. Oh, against that the gave empire. it away. <laughs> Well, Being no, no. the leader of a guerrilla force. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But it wasn't until she used her force powers to save, like, one of the little girls that were... These are, like, young farmers, by the way, because, like, I don't know, it's really messed up. Anyways, so she tries to save them but needs to use, like, force powers to, like, grab one of the girls and right, stuff. And then the Empire the sees, and yeah, yeah. Um, they don't have, like, a hit list of, of all the Jedi? Mm-mm. There the were, like, Empire? thousands of them. Oh, Okay. By the end of Order 66, so there's a whole bunch out there. Um, and she's a member. She was just a Padawan, too, so she's even minor, more minor, so they wouldn't have a list on all the younglings. No, <laughs> they should have. Um, but anyway, so um, she leaves, comes back. Um, what do you bail- mean she leaves? Where does she go? So when the Empire comes and they realize she's a Jedi, she she pretty much organized this group of all these farmers and stuff and is like, hide out in these caves. I need to go because I'm the one that's bringing these people to you. That's So if I leave, then hopefully they'll leave. She leaves. It doesn't work. They of course get enslaved, it does. I right? just my, no one can see on the audio, but I was like, that's not going to work. They're all going to die. Yeah. While she, she goes back to a planet that she was at before the moon, she worked for this family. Um, it doesn't really matter the specifics, but she was doing these jobs to kind of help um, other pilots and stuff. Like um, the family she was working for was, they were smugglers, but they were like good smugglers, like trying to smuggle gold. F- yeah, food to people who were being oh, impressed by the Empire. Robin Hood. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, those good deeds that she was doing, trying to down low, got the attention of one, the Inquisitor, um, and that's what sent him to that planet, and then two, got the attention of Bail Organa. So he was like, he's obviously, he's a part of the Imperial Senate, but he doesn't want to be working for the Empire or whatever. So he he's the one who pretty much starts the rebellion, notices these good things, like, that's got to be a Jedi, gets her attention, um, and recognizes Osaka because, Osaka because they were in the Clone Wars together. So then they kind of start the rebellion from there and they ended up going to that planet, rescuing all those farmers. She kills the Inquisitor. Does it ever bother you? The problem with the, the one thing I have with the Star Wars universe is like goldfish memory with when at times everyone remembers everything. And then at other times people remember nothing. What do you mean? So like the Clone Wars, right? People talk about them throughout all of the movies and all of the canon about how this long battle and, you know, long drawn out battle and how everyone it's was war, not just a battle, but yeah. you knew you this protracted war that took years and years and years and killed millions and millions of people and systems were uh, <laughs> subjugated and all of that stuff. Right. Everyone talks about that, but no one remembers like Luke, like from the new ones, you know what I mean? They're like, Oh, the force is real. Like it wasn't that long wait, ago. Wait, what do you mean? So everyone remembers the clone wars and they remember, I would hope that they remember the Jedi's fought in the clone war. Oh, okay. But I'm so saying, you gotta think, like, so after the Clone Wars and Order sixty six and all that stuff, and the Jedi's were known, like, hey, Jedi's are traitors. They're the ones who tried to overthrow the government, so we killed them all. So and at that point, it was like you don't mention the Force, you don't mention Jedi's or anything, because you're on a hit list from the Empire if you talk about any of that kind of stuff. So then it slowly, it's kind of like, you know, burning of the books kind of thing. Like that doesn't exist anymore. Jedi's so then it fake. turns into myth. Jedi, exactly. Jedi's were fake news. So right. turn, <laughs> alternative facts. After. <laughs> so it turned into myth and legend okay. at that point. All so right. That's why. So it's just because of the negative connotation about it. Yeah. So it's like you see a history book, but it's the Empire history book, right? But you see the, the dusty history book in the yeah, back but, of the library. You're like, oh, Jedi. Yeah, but see, I would think that they would want to vilify, continue to vilify the Jedi and the idea of the Force, right? They do. And then they just say it doesn't right, exist. The, See, that doesn't make sense. Okay, there's this terrible force that almost destroyed our quote-unquote empire, right? Mm -hmm. And our beautiful empire that we have now. But it didn't exist. No, not that it didn't exist, but it doesn't exist. It does sound like a Trump administration. doesn't make sense. I'm (laughs) just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) It's too easy. No, but I'm just saying. Like The the point is is that it's just weird to me that there's such a photographic memory about the protracted war, but there's no memory about the force. That's because a lot of that memory or history has been... Tried to be wiped out by the Empire and stuff like it's that. Just, so. I guess, yeah. Well, also, these people are all subjugated, so they don't really give a crap about <laughs> history. They're like, hmm, what? you know what I mean? You're yeah. like, I want to eat. <laughs> but anyway, so like through this book, the very beginning of the book is she needs to make herself look like she died, right? So she leaves her yellow lightsabers that you see her use all throughout the Clone Wars and stuff on a grave. Um, it was like, I don't know, some clone clone guy. Anyways, she made it look like she, she killed her or she, she died so they wouldn't look for her. 
So obviously we know that she has white lightsabers and rebels. So like this whole thing, this whole book's like, oh, how does she make her lightsabers? Blah blah blah. She ends it up like toward the end of the book when she's fighting the Inquisitor. The Force or the crystals call out to you, I guess. So it's like each crystal is meant for like you or whatever. So she sensed like the crystals were calling out to her on that moon. So the crystals that were calling out to her were the crystals in the Inquisitor's lightsaber. So she like when she defeated him, she pulled out the crystals and the lightsaber exploded and that's what killed him. Hmm. So and she because. Wait, she killed him? Mm-hmm. The Inquisitor, yeah. Hmm. Jedi kill people all the time. I know. I'm just saying it's not really the Jedi way, but go ahead. Well, the, okay, so there's actually a brutal part in the book where, like, so, like, one of, like, two of the farmers that Osaka's, like, really good friends with are kind of leading this resistance or hiding out in these caves and stuff. To draw out Osaka back, back to this moon. Oh, God. He, the Inquisitor, like, knows where they're hiding. Yeah, in the And cave. then pretty much is like, you, this one person, the leader that, the, that's going to be used as bait needs to come out or we're going to kill your friends. So she's like, oh, well, I'm obviously going to go out. And then the Inquisitor ends up killing all the friends anyway. It's like, dude, this is like freaking brutal, man. Yeah. It's dark. Anyways. Um, it's like, that's what's frustrating too about the heroes in the Star Wars universe. They always are like, oh, they'll if we do what they say, they'll do it. They'll, they'll, they'll meet up their bargain. It's like, mm-hmm. it, guys, like it's never worked out. Like <laughs> Asaka Tano is like, I'm going to leave you guys all here defenseless because they're kind of come after me. It's like, no, they're not. Yeah. yeah. They're going to go to them and be like, where is she? Oh, you aren't going to tell us, or you don't know. And they tell had like all. there was like a there was like a scene in the book where they're torturing this girl who's like her friend, like the leader of the resistance. I was like, dude, this is like brutal, man. Like For there's sure a device works. that sat on her chest, and then there was another scene where like the the, the ball and interrogator droid came, yeah, came Dr. in, you know, Doctor Ball. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Anyway, with the lightsabers though, because like so lightsabers are naturally like blue or green or whatever, and then they're only red for the dark side is because the dark side they they force the crystals to their will, and that's what turns them red. Makes ah. the crystals bleed. Remember, kyber crystals are like living crystals. Gotcha. So when she pulled the crystal out, she forced it back into like good, but because she's not, she doesn't consider herself a Jedi, they're, they're white. It's the balance between light and dark, right? And that's why her code name is Fulcrum. Because she's right in the middle. She's you know? in the middle. Ah. Ah. So that's going to cool. Like the last thing of the book is like, call me Fulcrum. It's like, oh, yeah, that's the thing from the show. Well, see, that's what everyone's saying. The potentially the last three movies here could be right because you have the original the original trilogy which is the last three movies of the of the trilogies of star wars so the first three are about the ascension of good right luke right the prequels are about the triumph of evil right and then the last three movies could potentially be about the fulcrum right the balance between the two you have somebody like um there's this i this concept okay all right right, this is all an idea that i heard and i think it actually uh, like if you're going to go from it from a standpoint of uh, literary, it, it kind of it makes you know brings balance to the movies, right? Which is what they always talk about. Is that um, Ben Solo actually becomes the last Jedi? That's the whole point. Is that he actually makes the change from good or bad? Who's the bad guy? Snoke. Yes, but it's this idea that like he still will do the things that are necessary. Like he'll do things that. That are, it's the, you know, he's going to do something terrible to justify the end. Vader did that. No, but right. But the, but I'm saying the the ascension of good is, I don't know. See, this is hard, right? Because it's, I don't know how you do it, how you balance it here, but that could I'm trying to think of things too. And and speaking of that, David, I just started the third Aftermath book just came out. And the Osaka one at the same time? or No, no, no. Osaka came out a few months ago. I just finished reading it. But Empire's End just came out, which is the third Aftermath book of this Aftermath trilogy, which is the Aftermath trilogy takes place directly after uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, it's second like, Death Star destroyed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where we last left off in Aftermath, they're all heading to Jakku, remember? Yes. So now I just started reading that, so I'll have more to report when I finish that. Yeah. So hopefully we'll know to see, you know, how that stuff gone on Jakku in Force Awakens, like a little down Star Destroyer and stuff. So we'll, we'll see that battle. Um, there's the Empire, or the Emperor's doing something there, so that'd be kind of cool to see. Not the em- Emperor. Yeah, remember the Emperor was digging up something oh, on Jakku? he was doing it before he, yeah, yeah, yeah. his final demise. Yeah, yeah. Quote, unquote. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. He's no, no, but so, and like, hopefully, and there's been, uh, things out there. I'm not reading spoilers in this book and stuff, but like, um, apparently a beloved Phantom Menace character meets his end in this book. Oh, I don't know who it is. I'm hoping it's Jar Jar. It's Jar Jar. Yeah. See, I, I didn't, I didn't read how, but I here, just know here's he, the problem with that, he reaches right? his end in this he, book. Here, yeah. That's the problem with that. Who cares? You're just, that's literally just like tongue in cheek. Like, well, the thing with these aftermath even... books is like, they would have like story chapter, story chapter, and then like an interlude on some planet. 
we were like, oh, there's these figures unrelated. playing. Yeah, and kind of unrelated, but it kind of keeps you, like, obviously, there's it's a big galaxy. There's a bunch of other stuff happening. Right. And it kind of clues you in on all these different things that are happening in the galaxy at the same time. So, I mean, it's probably going to be interlude, like, Jar Jar got ran over by a tank or something <laughs> like that at the end, you know? <laughs> he finally did something, like, uh, clumsy and actually killed himself. Yeah, but, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, obviously, we'll see what happens to Jakku. Maybe we'll, we'll see, maybe it's a little clue on who like... Snoke is, you know, so... Yeah, because he's, the whole, he's the whole catalyst, right? He's the one that elected to give Palpatine his power, so yeah. he was the puppet. Yeah. It's all Jar Jar's fart. Fault. <laughs> Jar Jar's fart. fart. <laughs> so, Anyways. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that is. But um, And then the next book is, is um, Thrawn in April, so I got till April to read Empire's End. When is the... I, you, we're caught up on Rebels. I think the last episode was like the... the is it the finale today? or is like second finale? <laughs> oh, it came out today that we're recording there's an episode that came out today yeah but i think there's only two episodes left two or three episodes and that's left. it right they're not well they uh, i've heard some things that season four has not been greenlit or announced so well because at a I certain point you're you're running out of space right well yeah but we're hoping it leads up until rogue one because that's two years after what we see in rebels so yeah okay what else you got? You got anything else? Last thing. New video game came out. Halo Wars 2. If, it, if I know anything fan. about you, you like Star Wars and Halo, and we're going to get to Marvel a little bit later. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, played the first Halo Wars. I think I talked about playing the remastered. Uh, it was an RTS game. It's on Xbox One and PC. Um, I got the Ultimate Edition, so I got to play did. it uh, before it came out to the little uh, plebs about the little uh, regular version. And I beat the campaign before it, it released for everyone else, too. Um, but yeah, beat the campaign. It's good. It's cool. Um, it's good, not great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I mean, for RTS, even Halo, even the first Halo Wars, like the story was kind of like eh, it's kind of weird. But then, like even the Halo games are kind of leaning towards the weird. So yeah. Um, and speaking of, there's <laughs> what? Why do all these games have like end credit scenes? Anyway, Halo Wars Two has an end credit scene too that leads into um, we gotta make a Halo kind of like 3. after Guardians, yeah. Where, when is this set, Halo 2 Wars? See, I don't know. I got to read about that. Because this takes place on the Ark, but after we've dealt with the Ark, that was Halo 2, I think. I think, yeah. Yeah, so this takes place after that's already done. Because like, this one brute named Atriox took over the Ark and all that kind of stuff. Is it good? It's real bad. It's been getting mixed reviews. No, it's cool. It's fun. I mean, if you like those is games, it just it's more of the same. Yeah, it's more of the same. But it's cool. Like, uh, um, the campaign's fine. Like, it's, I mean, it's entertaining. I like it. Um, Does it, like, do, like,. Cool little story beats of the 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 the, the first person games. Does it fill in um, spots in the canon? No, because this all happens outside of what's going on in those games. But so. it is canon, or is it yeah? Not? yeah it is. Oh, okay, there's no like like Star Wars thing where there's an ex- no. But they were asleep for in Krause for 28 years, I think. The Spirit of Fire. No, oh, so they come out of like Krause because they got alarmed because like the ship just reached the arc because they weren't sure where they were going. They didn't really have enough power to, like, slip space in here. No, no, they left their sl- slip space drive on the old planet. That's what killed it. That's what it was, dude. Yeah, got it. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so anyways, um, so they wake up 28 years later, and it's like, what the heck is going on? And that's what's, it's kind of a stretch, because it's like, you've been asleep for three decades, yet you end up beating the these brutes and their advanced technology in the end. Like, it's kind of stupid right like no technology advanced in 28 years exactly like you defeat this big old carrier yeah yeah anyway but it's it's entertaining it's, it's if heart you like and the... will that you cannot change all right buddy? yeah that will test the test of time will beat but if you like halo wars you're gonna like this game if you like halo you're gonna like this game it's fine it's not it's not like a crazy um super strategic rts like starcraft 2 or anything like where that. like if you miss a second you're, you're it's dead. definitely more casual uh it's obviously it's more console like playing it on pc i played it all on pc i didn't even play it on xbox um, it looks great. Um, the controls are kind of weird because I'm using keyboard and mouse, but like some of the menus and stuff are kind of meant for a controller. So there's like a lot of wasted space, and it's just kind of weird. But um, it's fine. I do want to still play some of the multiplayer modes. I want to try out the co-op. They do have firefight, which you're fighting waves of enemies. But that, like oh, that's not, well, that seems like more like tower defense. Well, they have this mode called blitz mode, which is um, it's like cards of units. So you have cards, and then you lay out the units on these pads, and you try to take out supply points, and you hold the supply points for a certain amount of time okay. to defeat the enemy. Um, so you don't have to worry about base building or any of that kind of stuff. There's like hero units you can call in. It's actually a lot like uh, Clash Royale that Jordan was talking about. That right, that's game. what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little bit closer to the, not tower defense, but that kind of game. Yeah, so like it makes it a little more casual, because I, I know you don't like the base building and all that stuff. Well, I don't, again, my favorite thing about RTSs is, is the black ball death thing or yeah, whatever, yeah. right? Where it's just like... So this you can get there quick, yeah. Huh? This you can get there quick, like the blitz mode and stuff where you don't have to yeah. worry about the base build and stuff. Yeah. But it's a really cool game. Um, 
I just don't like playing because usually I play multiplayer RTSs like with you or, or with somebody else that's better at it than me. So I'm like in like the first like age of civilization. I'm still building like huts and the other one's like, I have nuclear bombs. And I'm like, this isn't fun. Like, uh, anyways. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's cool. fine. It definitely leads into like, there's a cliffhanger ending like it reminds me of Halo 2 where you're like, there's a cliffhanger like you finish the fight. But there's supposed to be more DLC coming out, story DLC. So... Since I have the Ultimate Edition, I have the Season Pass. And, and they have online multiplayer, like, w- player versus player, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not complaining of that stuff. I don't, I don't have time to work. sink. Yeah, I don't have time to sink time into getting good at this game. I'd rather just do co-op and stuff. You gotcha. Um, other than that, And the I co-op, think... real quick, the co-op is the, the campaign, or is it a separate co-op? They do have co-op. Co-op. We haven't done any of the co-op yet. That's why I want to yeah. try it. But they have, I think they have co-op in the campaign. You could do all of, all of it co-op. But so. there's not, like, a co- campaign co-op separate. Just co-op. No, I think you can do the campaign co-op. No, I'm saying is there a separate campaign that is co-op only? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, gotcha. That's like, they question. have the firefight. That's the ways, but no, they don't have a separate. Gotcha. I think that is it, though. Uh, David, what you doing? Um, we got a couple things here. Uh, this week, well, the last two weeks, I've played some video games, played some board games, and watched some TV. So what do you want to start with first? Video games, David. Video games, since we're talking about Halo. So I played more of the Batman Telltale. Did you finish it? I'm pretty close. Okay. Um. It's awesome. Yeah, I heard it's really good. No, no, no. It's like amazing. Like, you know, we always talk about like, especially with the Batman versus Superman thing and like the new Batman movie coming out. Like if we have to freaking see his parents get murdered again, like, please don't do that. They do that here. <laughs> That's fine. Because pearls? You got the pearls? Yes, of course. And it's actually kind of funny because like the guy who kills him just like grabs the pearls and like he's going to steal them, right? But in this, he just rips him. And like they go flying and it's like, why would you, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Like anyway. Um, it's like, can you, wait, hold on. Can you just undo yeah, that just, in the back really quick? Just unscrew and skip. Yeah, like, oh, come on, you. guy. Um, anyway, uh, they mess with Batman's origin quite a bit. And, you know what I mean? I'm not going to... Again? No, no. No, just pull it. Who cares? Okay, well, let me just tell you the change in the origin. It's it, it, it And it colors the game a lot. Um, you know, what do you know about Batman's parents? Martha... Went to and, an opera. That was Martha? The, Mar- What's her name? <laughs> Say her name again. <laughs> For the... <laughs> Say your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just too easy. <laughs> so no, terrible. what do you know about his his parents? What do you, other than her? They're name? dead. No, come on. About them. They, their their characters themselves. Do you know uh, anything they're about like Thomas philanthropists. Wayne? Yes. They're good people. Yes. Oh, I heard about this. Yes. I heard about this. Um, in this game, you find out they are not as. Sweet. They're working for Falcone or something. Well, they were working with the mob. Um, to and they had this, you know, the the squeaky clean, person. Prasad, facade, facade mm. to the city of Gotham. They were the saviors of Gotham, and they were the good guys. But you find you realize that Thomas Wayne was like a freaking like in the mafia. Um, which remember the whole reason you know Bruce Wayne is Bruce. The way he does his thing is because he always looked up to his family as like the shining light on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's protecting the city like his parents did. Yeah. That's cool, because it, like, destroys Bruce Wayne's world. Yeah, but don't they still do that? What do you mean? Don't they still use their money to help the city? They just get their money by bad means? Or, like, what makes them bad, exactly? Well, yeah, so there's this idea, like, oh, so let me, let me here's another little piece. So, they would use, because remember, Thomas Wayne is a doctor. <clears throat> His dad was a, a famous doctor. Mm-hmm. And uh, they did, What they, do we do when we fall? Huh? We get back up. That's right, right? <laughs> I know. Um, but <clears throat> what he would do, because, you know, Arkham Asylum was, was opened- you know when they they was new when Thomas and Martha Wayne were like younger or whatever, right? It, it's now shut down or it's and anyways, there there's a whole thing about we're going to build this new facility because <clears throat> Arkham Asylum is like terrible. It's this awful, you know, basically prison hospital. We can't keep people in there; they keep escaping. <laughs> right, right, right. So, anyways, um, there's video that surfaces of Thomas Wayne, um, causing his political opponents. He would like give them a dose of like some kind of drug that would make them go insane. And so he'd be like, oh, they're like, there, there's this video where it's like, I'm, I'll sell you the land, I promise. And he's like, oh, it's too late. Give her a dose that she'll, she'll never forget. And it's like, that's Batman's dad. What is Batman doing? Well, Bruce Wayne is just like, oh, my God. He, he, that's the whole point of the game. Like, how do you react? Um, the game is really cool um, for a Telltale game. There's enough there. Plus, the Batman thing helps out a lot, right? Um, but it's fun. I love at the end of these games what they do. They do it with the dead of, or what are they called? The stats. Yes. 
um, Walking Dead. They at the end they show like what you chose, how terrible of a person you community. are compared to the community. Uh, there's a couple times I'm on point with everybody, and there's a couple times I'm like, oh god, I'm a monster. Yeah, because <laughs> they do that thing. You and 13 percent of the people <laughs> chose to shoot this guy in the face. <laughs> um, it and it's uh, it's one of those games where you want to replay it again because you're like. You know, because they say, oh, you know, it's we talk about the diamond, right? So at the beginning of the game, everyone kind of starts at the same point. You can flare out and make different decisions, but you all come back to the point at the top of the diamond, meaning the end of the game <clears> is pretty <throat> much the same. You, it's just so annoying with those games. Man. No, no, but this, this, there are, and, and really the fun part is the, I don't know if, I haven't finished it, so I don't know if the ending, and I haven't played it multiple ways, but I've only played it the way I've played it, but... Um, that's always frustrating. You're right. Um, it's like, I made all these choices. I spent all this time. Mass Effect. Why is it all just different with different... You know what I mean? That's the... That's the oh, know, my God. I just poster realized child that, of that. that game comes out next month. Yes. Oh so, anyways, the fun part is the diamonding, the, the widening out, right? It's right, like right. how the small little things affect um, little other decisions you make while that... Gerald Bills will remember that. <laughs> right. They do that. And, like, there's... Little, like, wait, what? Like, there's this part where you're going to go talk to the mayor, this crooked mayor, right? And um, do you go as Bruce Wayne? Or do you go as Batman? It's like, come on. That's an easy decision. Batman. Like, come on. 99% of people chose Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, you can intimidate him and stuff like that. And then Gordon. Where is she? Yeah. And then, uh, at the you know, Gordon, uh, Jim Gordon hears about it. And he he's like, hey, man, like, I, I'm on your side, but you can't go, like, intimidate. You can't punch the man in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you mean I can't punch the man in the face? <laughs> he does also have the change voice thing. So he hits that every time in this game. He changes oh, so his voice. Oh, so it gives the... Re- yeah, so it makes the voice all blah, 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 One blah, good blah. thing about Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. They gave it a reason. Yeah, so anyway, so... I'm Christian Bale. <laughs> but it's just that little twist of the of the story of, like, his um, family being tied in with the mob when, you know... There's a few things you know about Batman. His family is good. They're these philanthropists who are, like... This he doesn't kill people. Oh, wait, that was messed up, too. <laughs> no, I, I know. But I'm saying this is an interesting way of changing his perspective because... The Batman you meet in this game is the Batman you you know from the comics and the animated yeah, series yeah. and all that stuff. But it's like, oh, that one, you know, that big thing that makes Batman Batman. Yeah, we're gonna screw with that. You know what I mean? It's like, cool. Let's see how Batman reacts. And like, he can, you can make him, you can make him like pretty, pretty. I don't, I didn't pick that because I'm like, this is the problem. Second like Batman, it's like. It's like, oh, you you can't kill me from the tithe? Exactly. And he, like, breaks his ankles, like, lets him fall. It's like, Jesus, Batman. Right, exactly. You can go that route with this. And, like, the problem that I have with these games with decisions, and especially characters that I know from other mediums, is, like, I just always pick what Batman would do. I don't pick what I want to do, which is kind of a problem. That's why I like games like Mass Effect, because, you know, Shepard, I don't have any, I don't have any baggage with that guy. He can, he's going to be me. I yeah. I live vicariously. Yeah, exactly. Right, so I make the decisions I would make. Oh, you would, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'd shoot that guy because we need that freaking you know cargo or whatever, right? But in here, I'm like, Batman wouldn't kill anybody, or he wouldn't intimidate like a you know a 16 year old. Mm-hmm. I'll just l- let him go. You know what I mean? It's like that that th- that does kind of make the game a little broken for me. But yeah. that's an internal thing that most people probably don't have that problem. Anyway, <laughs> do I be me or do I be Batman? Uh, who am I? <laughs> who am I? But it is they do the crime alley thing and all that crap that from the but it's it's a fun game. I definitely recommend people check it out and the and it seems like it's getting um it does that thing too where it like ticks down the time for you to pick a option. I hate that. I hate it's, that. It's, it's like so walking, stressful. Okay, so like Walking Dead, I played the first Walking Dead game and some of the second before I was like, oh, this game, I'm so it's worried. too much of the same, right? That's yeah, the, and they do like the and again it has that diamond effect that you were talking about. So but like the decisions they have in the game are like they're brutal. They're like, do you want to save the son who's kind of an idiot or do you want to save his mother? It's like, yeah. how can I choose? That's like yeah. the most brutal thing ever. That's I, I enjoy that though. Great choices are fun. Not like, when it doesn't really matter towards the end. That is true. That's like if both, basically that character fills the same void yeah. throughout the rest of the game, that's stupid, yeah. right? And this, there's things like that. Like you can save Harvey Dent or you can save Catwoman. Like there's this little thing back and forth. But it's funny again because I'm Batman. I'm like... Well, we all know what Harvey Dent's going to turn into. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't save him. He's going to turn into Two Face. But, anyways, um, so check that out. That's Batman Telltale. Did you go to save him and you accidentally spill coffee on his face? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's pretty. It's I'm not going to ruin too much more, but it's very good. They they do a lot of cool stuff with that. Um, played a little bit more of. Speaking of games, I played a, uh, a board game that we talked about. I think it was our board game of the year. Was it I Mansions think of Madness? So one of them. So Mansions of Madness. No if, Rebellion was. Yeah, I think Star Wars Rebellion was. So Mansions of Madness Second Edition came out last year. So this is the app driven, uh, Cthulhu mythos, Lovecraftian, a bunch of with the iPad app, yeah. Yeah, a bunch of detectives. You're all playing detectives cooperatively, and crazy stuff happens, and you're trying to solve these mysteries. We've played 
one or two scenarios? One. We've played we one. I've played another one with um, and a couple other friends, and then we just recently played another scenario, a really long one, with uh, my sister-in-law and my wife and her boyfriend. Um, not my wife's boyfriend. My <laughs> like, <sister-in-law>. whoa. <laughs> We're having Robert, a re- look out. <laughs> really open relationship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no um so we played the really long and it's, it's a really long scenario and i like the game but it is the problem with the game is like all the thing it's just the same thing over and over just longer just longer and more it's like, clues more monsters yeah more and rooms. it's like okay you know if you're gonna sink like four hours into a game Dude, like that long it was like three and a half hours which Jesus. is i don't mind that it's just like you know what it reminded me of you ever you go bowling right and everyone's like how many games you want to buy and you're like let's buy two and by the end of the second game, you're like throwing the ball between your legs because you don't care. Yeah, yeah. This is everyone's what happens. Everyone's checked out. Yeah, yeah, everyone's checked out. Like the first game, everyone's like, oh, this is fun. And, and I always like, hate that because at the end of the first game, you're like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll do a second one, right? Yeah. And then like <laughs> by the fifth frame, everyone's like, dude, look, I can do this trick shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw it left-handed, right? Yeah. Can you spin it? I can't spin it. Here, let me try. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's my, this is what happens in this game. So like at the like hour three, you're like, okay. Like in your it's it should be tense because it's winding down to like, the moment of truth, right? Are you going to beat the game or is the game going to win? And the problem is, is like, it's the same, it's the same um, kind of, what is it? What do you call them? Jigga Chung moments? Jigga Chung is like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, like the whoa moment. It's just like, oh, this, you get circumstantial evidence. Woo. It's like, come on, man. You got to have a better, like, like a moment. Like there's no door. I don't see a door. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you need those moments in a game that's this long. So like after all of the work you've done, it's like oh, it's worth it. Yeah. It was the butler all along, you know, like something like that. And it's with the candlestick in the library. <laughs> it's like wait, we're playing Clue. <laughs> um, no, but it's um, there's nothing. It's just so obvious. Like the bad guy is the bad guy, and like that sucks. Like the only thing that makes your game longer is just saying you need to do more fetch quests. It's like this is this is now you've now it's more of the same. Yeah. And that's the thing about I think about that game is like it's great in the shorter scenarios and it's great showing the game to somebody the first time and then you keep playing it and you're like oh it's just more it's how many scenarios are there there's i think there's four or five in the base game Mm -hmm. and so we played the longest one no actually there's one that is longer it's like five hours it's like give me a break like i'm never gonna play that but they've come out with expansions for it but i've heard the expansions are unfortunately just different monsters different investigators and that that can be fun but it's like what else can you do though except just different well you could have here's the problem right like we played time stories and time stories is very story driven and like you can only play it once really for all intents and purposes, yeah, you're right? Remember which Cause you're going to remember yeah. all of the, the, the secrets, the chicken yeah. chung moments, right? You can't have that in this game. Well, you could have this in this game, but then it would be, it would be feeding two masters, right? Cause it does have people like to replay these games, right? It's not about, it's a survival game, right? It's like, you don't, you don't want surprise and too much story in your survival game. Right. right, right. Um, so it's just, it's, it's just, when a game's that long, you expect a moment at the end of like you roll the dice at the very end, and it's like it's not there. So for me, it's it's, kind of it's, it's it's it, for how how much we loved it the first few times we played it. It's starting to wear on me, which is sad because I want to introduce that game to people. Um, but I think what I'm ultimately going to do is just play the first two scenarios, the shorter ones, because they they don't overstay their welcome, right? Like I don't mind doing. I'm assuming same... some of the expansions have slow or lower. I hope. I like hope shorter. They... Well, the other thing too is like you know the puzzles. You know, like there's within the game. Sometimes you run into a <clears throat> particular. A lot of them are like you roll dice and you see if you meet a skill check. You know, like classic D and D stuff. Oh, if you roll over fifteen, you succeed. If you roll under fifteen, you fail. Right? right. That's in this game a little bit, but the other cool thing is sometimes you'll go to a particular test and then something will pop up on the ipad like you have to do a um you know like uh, what are those called those those puzzles where you have nine pieces and you shift them left and right and you try to create a picture again no, those are the worst right they have that stuff but they're i thought they were going to add more to it i don't know if they are here's what it's you know what it feels like it feels like um the gimmick when you first see you're like whoa <laughs> and then like when you get get into it it's like oh it's just the same thing over and over yeah, it's yeah. like pokemon go First time you see, like, holy crap! This is like the real world. Like, this is the street I live on, and there's Pokemon on it. And then you play it for like you know thirty hours, or in your you case, caught your third Pidgey or thirtieth Pidgey, and yeah, you're like, oh. and you're like, okay, this game is kind of. I'm just playing it at this point for the purposes of collecting it. Yeah, I now will only play that. I think with people who have not played it yet, because then I get to see their reaction of like, oh, that's really cool the way it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Makes sense. Um, so that's that's kind of cooling on a board game, which is usually not my style, but. Um, uh, let's see. What else do I got? Um, oh, speaking of board games. So I started <clears throat> cataloging my board games. 
you know you have a problem when you like start cataloging stuff. Um, so if you don't boardgamegeek.com, they're like the they're like the the board game website. Like they have of every course. board game ever. Um, so I've I have a catalog on there, but I wanted to like create a better catalog, like where I could filter stuff by like. Do you have it up in the cloud? And you I can... do. It's up on Dropbox. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so after I put all my games in, because it doesn't keep a running number of board games on Board Game Geek of that you own, um, and plus it like mixes expansions like as if they're the regular. Anyways, uh, point. Oh, being, they don't count as like an additional. No. Um, so no, no, no. They count it as an extra, and I don't want to count an expansion as an, a game that you own. It's not a game. It's an expansion to a game. Hmm. And how do you feel about that? Like, I uh, said it would be a whole different game. No. That you need the base to play, but it's still a whole different game. No. Because it's its own box, isn't it's it? A lot of them are like modules, like where it's like you can add this into a game. Anyways, point being it's is got I want... its own box, David. Right. Well, I get rid of that. Uh, See, I just fit everything in one box because I space is limited for most <laughs> board gamers, especially. Okay, so anyway, so I counted up all of the ones I have. How many games do you think I have? Just guess. Now, I know this isn't the only room, David. You no. got them, like, sparsed out. <laughs> you got stashed under the seat of your car, probably. probably. You yeah. got some in the office. Just I take think a guess. I have a game. Um, Do you? No. Oh, <laughs> I'm just like, saying. Right. You, got them, you got some buried in some remote location under some oak tree in case, you know, you lose all these in a this fire. Is, this is my game. <laughs> what does he say? Got one of, like, Catan or something. It's buried under. Um, I'm going to say you have 97 games. More. Keep going. 132. More. Jesus Christ, David. <laughs> We're going to open up a store here pretty soon. Keep going. 176. More. Over 200? Yes. Over 300? No. Okay. <laughs> 268. Jesus Christ, David. No, no, no. I, uh, 238. All right, we, have a, we, 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 we'll get that. I can't wait till we get to our intermission episode, guys. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it's cool. So what I did is I, I organized it. I know this is so exciting for everyone to know. You can organize it obviously by alphabet and then you can organize it. I put in the this num- all in Excel or how do yeah, you? It's all in Excel. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Excel. Everyone loves Excel. No, I organized it. Also, you can organize it by number of players best played with. Cause that's always important. Cause like, you know, sometimes you get like a weird number, like, Oh, there's five of us. What games can we play? It's like, hold on. Um, <laughs> let me drill it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it, uh, then I have it by weight. Now, not oh, the box God. weight. It's like the weight of the game from zero to five, five being like the most like difficulty, like difficulty, heaviness. heaviness. Uh, yeah. Which okay. is good because oh, wait, yeah. Not what are you thinking? Like the weight of the box? Yeah, I'm like, well, I need to carry. I need to bring. How much can my car hold? I need to bring five <laughs> games. Can I carry all these five games? No, like difficulty of the game. Okay. Um, and then I also have it for time. How much time does it? What's take? the most difficult game? Like, what's a five, David? Um, I don't have anything that's a five. I don't know if board game Twilight game, Imperium. Twilight is Imperium, a... I think, is like a three point eight nine. Are these like according to Board Game Geek? Yeah, it's all. I, I'm not. I'm not giving my own. Jesus, lady. if that's not if that's a three point eight, what is a five? I have no idea. I want to find I don't out. Play. Yeah, you do. You want to play it? Come on. For like three days. <laughs> <laughs> well, Twilight Imperium takes like six to eight hours. It's one of those games. It's like you know, it's the epic space opera, and it, uh, it you know, it's it's a lot of um, negotiation. So What's it's rebellion. Here, give me a second. Give me a five, David. Come on, give me a five. All right, hold on. Uh, let's see. Give me four, give me five, give me your <laughs> give side. Me that, that? <laughs> uh, Rebellion Stupid. is a... Okay, here we go. The The most difficult game that I own is a 4.29, and it is Twilight Imperium. Ah, oh, see. Um, uh, third edition. No, 4.22. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I don't want to speak out of turn here. <laughs> um, Star Wars Rebellion, though, is not as difficult as you would think. It is a 3.55. Give me a five. I, there's no five. No, I mean like Board Game Geek. Like, what's, oh, what's I can't a five? look it up by that way. Oh, okay. That's why it took me so long to do this because you can't look it up by weight. Um, but I have. Then a, how do you determine those, num- those numbers? They're, they're they're voted on by the community. Uh, the community okay, okay. puts in the number. Anyways, so catalog that. That was fun doing. I know it's super boring, but it's just it's also cool because like there's a bunch of games that, especially the way that this is cataloged now, like. It's, there's games that I just don't see because they're either at the different parts of the shelf or they're behind games. At the house or a different yeah. building or a different state. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> uh, look forward to talking about board games for the rest of my life. Um, what a let's surprise. See. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about uh, a show that we both watched uh, that came, that premiered, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. Legion. Uh, FX. Is FX. This is a in the Marvel X-Men universe. Yes. Is it officially in the X-Men universe? Like the cinematic universe? Yeah. I don't think so. I Does think it really matter? Oh no! Because like now with the Logan thing, what I said when you bring time when you bring time travel, then like anybody could just be like, oh well, this is the one that they didn't fix. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's why I don't like time travel in TV shows or 
in movies generally because then it just like everything's broken. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so Legion is a part of the Marvel Universe. It's a character. I think it was introduced more recently because I don't remember reading any comics from Legion when I was younger or even hearing about it. But the idea, my understanding, again, not a big Legion fan, is uh, the character has multiple personality disorder and each of his personalities has a superhuman power or mutant power. And they're all yeah, different. Yeah, I don't think that's the case in the show. Why? We don't know that yet. It's only that's three true. episodes in. You only well, watch I mean, the first two, right? The first two, yeah. Okay, I want to talk about the third. But we won't spoil well, too much. All we know so far is that he's a very powerful telepath. That yeah. he doesn't have control over his abilities. Right. And so, um, but as the comic book goes, like one, so he has different, literally different personalities. So like one personality will be telekinesis. One personality will have like the ability to shoot beams out of their eyes like Cyclops. Oh, so the other one will be like <clears throat> superhuman strength. And like, you know, um, I was reading stuff about split personality disorder because, you know, the the... M. Night Shyamalan movie came out. There are people that have it, like where they're actually like physically not just like they are different. Like some people have split personality. One person will be blind, which is like, what? Dude, your brain's weird, man. Brains are weird. Yeah, I know. I'm like, what? How does that even work? Anyway, so uh, the movie is uh, David Howler. I think is his name. Is the the character's name the not the David? Guy. Yeah. So David. he is He's a beast. What? That's the guy I recognize him from. He's the guy playing the Beast in the new Beauty and the Beast movie. Oh, that's who's that's the guy who's playing him. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, good for him. He's got a lot of work. Uh, anyway, so it takes place with this character who is uh, starts off in like a mental hospital because you're basically told that this guy has split personality disorder. Like right. he's, a, he's just he has crazy. Schizophrenic. schizophrenic. Yeah, he's just. I mean, check all the boxes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> he's at this hospital and they're trying to treat him, uh, but at the same time, like basically, what's going on is he's not sick. He's uncontrollable mutant powers right um and then the show is very avant-garde would be the word i would use it's weird the show is because they play into that schizophrenic and like what is real what is not real uh first of all one of the characters is named sid barrett who i don't know if you know that name but that's from uh, one of the musicians in pink floyd who got kicked out and was like in a mental hospital oh really for like psychedelic drugs and stuff like that which is like a cool little tie-in easter egg thing um but there's there's this whole concept in the in the show of like him, like it's memories of memories of memories type thing. Like he keeps flowing back to memories. And you're like, did this? And there's a part. Where it's like, wait, where am I? It's like, oh, we're there. We're in your memory. You're you're living your memory. Inception, yeah, 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 whatever. But it's not even Inception, right? Inception's no. I guess Inception's your dreams, yeah. which it could be memories. But it, it it's you know we we talked about like with um, Daredevil. It, it, all of these TV shows that are uh, Marvel, cin- not cinematic, but just Marvel TV shows, it seems like what they're doing is like, we're going to take a superhero show and we're going to put it in another uh, TV show type, right? So Daredevil has a little bit of this like um, uh, SVU crime drama, right? A little bit. Not a lot, but yeah. some of it. And there's some of that lawyering part of it, right? The the Yeah, but it's not like a procedural where it's, you have the no, monster No, not the a week. procedural, but I mean, there is detective work that's yeah, done yeah, in yeah. it. S- same thing with like Jessica Jones, a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, I mean, even, I mean, old and kind of do. Right, but this one feels like um, American Horror Story meets like a superhero movie. Because like there's like unsettling parts. And it well, also- so, First of all, this is by the creator of the Fargo TV series, which I've raved on and on about. Yeah. It's one of the best shows on television. By the way, season three comes out in the end of April. Pretty excited. But so like that that cinematic look to the show is definitely like part of that. Like you can tell the look of it, the um, the direction of the show, the cinematography of it, like the slow motion, like the you know when he goes kind of crazy in the kitchen, everything yeah, kind of yeah. flies out. It's just like everything just looks amazing and just weird and yeah the production values through the roof of yeah. the show like it's getting to a point where i'm like this is better than the, the movies like it's more it's weird because like fx is like taking that crown from amc now with these like for yeah that's not good... that's not like premiere shows like hbo or something yeah. like that where you're just buying cable yeah um no seriously like uh because you know when you do a superhero movie like sci-fi tries to sci-fi channel right mm-hmm. tries to do like quote-unquote superhero not superhero but you know what i mean like people who have abilities or something like mm-hmm. that right and like it looks bad like Battlestar Galactica you know like the, the parts sorry it's, no no, no that's not. fine that's that's I, that's part of the what makes that show good is kind of the campiness of it right and I'm saying but it, they but kind of they're they it's self-aware kind of thing. right but this show Black. is right this show is like so well done and looks so beautiful even in parts that are like you said like there's a scene in where he's kind of freaking out and everything's flying around him because of his telekinesis abilities but he can't control it and in like slow mos and like the special effects look amazing. It looks amazing. like something out of... Yeah. It reminds me of that scene in X-Men where Magneto is like crushing everything in the room. 
Uh, that's from First Class, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. When no, he's the like, kid, right? the bar. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was anyway. I think Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon because he's in everything. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. That that looks fantastic, and I love. I love There's a couple the uns- parts. You know, like um. Spoiler alert here, guys. Where they they break him out of the mental hospital and the guy's like throwing people. It's like that, that looks, looks kind of cheesy and stuff. I mean, but it's TV. You know what are you gonna do? Right. But I'm saying it's not Game of Thrones money. Right. And. Um, even sometimes the older Game of Thrones, go back and watch them. They're not that great. Um, oh, really? Yeah, they look bad, especially now because the show has gotten production value through the roof. But I like the show because it feels like um, Twilight Zone, feels like things are like, you don't, it's, you know, because now that we watch all these shows like Westworld and Game of Thrones and, uh, you know, all these shows that have like the the twist. Mm-hmm. Now I'm w- At looking. At the end of every episode, you're now, like, whoa. Well, now I'm looking for like, what's going to be the big reveal? Like, who is this character and because he's schizophrenic, you're like, there's too many, too many options. Not only that, right? but there's like things like in the first episode, you're like, oh, that never happened. So now it's like, what is happening? You know yeah, I mean? and he'll be like dreaming. And is that real or is that a figment of his imagination? Right, and I love that. It's- and I got to kind of get off my lawn here with um, just TV in general. So there's like, again, spoiler here. There's like a part where Abu Plaza's character, like a wall was put in between her and it's like really gruesome and gross. Right. Remember that? Yeah. And then like, I watch walking dead a lot. There's a real gross. The fact that we can see really gross, gruesome stuff like that on cable TV, but we can't see a titty is ridiculous. David. Well, the joke is it's okay to stab the breast, not grab it. Right. I mean, I was telling Sarah this. I'm that's like American television. Yeah. I'm like, obsessed oh, with gross. Violence. Like, I mean, it's brutal and, and I know it's fake, but it's like, dude, we can see that. Or like, like I said, some of the walking dead is ridiculous disgusting and like right. very gratuitous right. eye popping out it's gross <laughs> there's no reason to do it and like i said we can't see a booby like yeah so no i think it's stupid Anyways, I mean, if, right but tv the, the, this this is tvma by the way aubrey plaza like immediately when she was on i was like oh that's weird because she always kind of plays that similar character dead eye <laughs> no right yeah, like not interesting. deadpan like yeah. Oh, whatever yeah yeah, because she's definitely her character. I know she obviously parks and wreck, but like even in, I feel like in other stuff she's done. Her comedy is kind of like that too, like right? And it's panel. weird to see her like animated and because she's another patient at this uh, clockwork. I think is the name of the facility. Yeah, I don't remember. But, uh, yeah. but she's like really like like extrovert, you know, extroverted and like is like goofy and funny and like making jokes. And um, you meet uh, Sid Barrett, who's another character that shows up at the um, hospital. Um, with his mental hospital, but like I said, which one is he? Huh? Sid Barrett is the girl. Sydney. Sydney Barrett is her name on the show. The character's name. The oh, girl. the blonde. The blonde. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And so he calls her Sid Barrett. Oh, okay. And okay, right, okay, there's okay. like a yeah, little yeah, cool yeah. little nod there, and it's like, oh, that's cute because of the whole Pink Floyd yeah, thing. Yeah. Anyways, the rogue. <laughs> right, and she she can't touch people, but then you they they even do a good, cool job of like explaining powers, which is always the fun part. In these like because you don't, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy, right? you have all these characters that nobody knows and you you're making them enjoyable and likable. Like all the characters so far, there's a character that has the ability to like go into your memories and like relive them. And I'm like, that has got to be the, one of the coolest superpowers. Cause like I always, cause it's not like, Spoiler. Spoiler X, like, Oh, I could see your memory. It's like, no, we're in it. Like, Oh wait, let's rewind. Let's see what happened here. Yeah. We can look at it from a different angle based on what you saw, or what you remember. Yeah, it's like TiVo. And like where he memories. can't see his dad's. Oh, it's, creepy super cool oh yeah and there's like like i said the reason why i say it has a little bit of like that horror twinge is because you're learning like why he's kind of a disturbed individual this mm-hmm. this main character <clears throat> and like they lay it on like they're not holding pulling punches with like creepiness like super and you're not at the third episode the third episode gets really unsettled no i've heard like it's just it gets weird. it gets american horror story where it's like this is on i've FX. never seen american horror story oh, okay so well th- th- that show does this you know like a, you know people don't like <clears throat> horror you know if you don't you're not a fan of horror right, right no. but I, it's not like gratuitous horror it's like that the call is coming from inside the house and you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's uh, it's like that suspenseful. Like they're right behind you, right? And you're and running. Yeah, and it's funny. So like my wife and I watched the first episode of this, and I knew what this was. I knew it was X Men show. She didn't know what this was. I just you know hit play. And she's like, "What?" By like the first ten minutes, like, "What the heck are we watching?" Right. And then the you only see Legion like title sequence at the very end of the show, and then it shows the X, and she's like, and like they mentioned at the very end, like we may be dealing with a mutant, and she's like, "This is more like Marvel." So like, what are we watching? Right. <laughs> No, it's, it's it's still really it's done very well. It is very weird, but we need something different. You know what I mean? And this definitely fits that bill. Something well, like really f- different on TV. And they're not leaning so heavy on the X Men thing. It felt yeah, like yeah. they were when they were when they were marketing this as like an X Men show. And yeah, I was like, it's got the uh, yeah, it's got the X Men Legion. And it's like, <laughs> are the oh, but uh, they don't lean on it 
at all, really, to be honest. They do start to mention some of quote unquote mutants because that's their. Money. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting that's like, their money word. We're like the we're like a sub school to Xavier, <laughs> right? Um, and but I also at the same time like it's the same concept that I talk about with like Star Wars or with Halo or with any of these like huge universes. It's like why do we constantly have to run into the same characters that we love? Like just do just take the universe and like we all there's certain rules that we know about this universe. Right. And then play into that. And like, yeah, you can have new bad guys that are like subdivisions of the other big bad guy. But like, I don't know, like it's the same thing with the, what they're doing with the MCU stuff on Netflix. It's like, do that. Like, take a character, make the conflict. They're in their own world, but it's like, oh, hey, yeah, we remember the when the aliens came, you know, in New the York. Event, yeah. And like, but the conflict of that character, like the overarching issue is smaller. Yeah, right? it's, it's its own thing. Right. And that's yeah. what they're doing here. And it's cool. And the bad guy is interesting, sort of. We'll see. Is the eye the bad guy? Sort of, you'll see. Okay, I'm cool. not spoiling. No, yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep watching. Um, it's definitely a good refreshing. But like show. I said, I just I love the the psychedelic and what's also like the the credit scenes in the, the second episode. The credit scenes at the end. It's all jolly. Yeah, it's like jolly. Though. It's got like '80s block yeah. stuff. It's like like I said, avant garde. Like there's parts of the show that you're like, what is going on? And like but that's cool. That's refreshing. No, you know? it's totally like yeah. it's super weird, unsettling, but at the same time, like this is different. I, I Alyssa hasn't watched it. I told her I was like, I think you might like it because it's. It's it's not so such a superhero show. It's more about like learning about this character and like what was his past and where is he at. So, right, right. Anyways, um, okay. So that was my what you do, and we got a couple more things. So we wanted to talk about Oscars of this Sunday. We're recording. Do you want to do that before? Um... Yeah, let's. We'll finish with the best of the uh, this weekend top one hundred movies. So let's do Oscar bait. <laughs> yeah. So I've always wanted to do this. Um, Oscar poll. Apparently, Oscar polls are very popular in offices. I've never been a part of one. Um, well, you're in an office by yourself right now. <laughs> How dare you? I work for a company. I know, but you're by yourself and you're one off. <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm gonna mark a poll by myself. <laughs> Who won, Gerald? Woo. No, but Oscars are tomorrow. As we're, we're recording this, will come this. out on Monday, so everyone already know the answer. So we'll, we'll yes. either look super smart or super dumb. Yeah. So I've always wanted to do something like this. I obviously like a movie. I've seen some of these movies. Um, so I'd like to, we're gonna go back and forth. We're gonna pick our own, and then we'll see. Based on how we do, we're gonna. The loser is gonna have to do some some stuff. We have those jelly beans that we didn't do for the Super, Super Bowl. Profits. Yeah, we never know. Who we'll won. do it here. For everyone you get wrong, you gotta eat a jelly bean next. That's week. fine. Okay. All right. So, so I'm gonna go over this, David, and you're gonna write down which one we pick. Yes. Um, what do you want me to start with? I mean, I don't need to do like best technical effects. Like no, how, no. how far? How far? Do I you think want me you to do. Go? I think you just start at the top. Do best picture, and we'll work our way down. No, you gotta end with best picture. Okay, David. then Come do. On, let's now. do best uh, actors. I mean, do you want me to do like makeup? Do, I no, mean, okay, no. Okay. God, no. Okay. Pick like the big ones. Come on, you know what a big one the is. The cinematography, and, big one. No. Original song, original score. Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, documentary short. No. No. Film editing. No. Um, visual effects. No. Sound editing. No. Animated feature. We'll start there. There you go. Animated okay. feature. We're both going to pick the same one. All right. So here are the nominations for best animated, animated feature of 2016. The nominations are we have Kubo and the Two Strings. No. We have Moana. My Life as a Zucchini. Never heard of that. What? The Red Turtle. Never heard of that either. And Zootopia. I did hear about the Red Turtle, but... Uh... I think the Red Turtle is by the same guy who did um, it's that uh, Japanese artist. That guy, Studio Ghibli. Yeah. It's going to be Moana. I'm going to pick Zootopia. No. I want Moana to win, but I think Zootopia is actually going to get it. You it's might be culturally, right. Culturally relevant, David. All right, so you're marking them down? So I picked Moana and you picked Zootopia. Zootopia. All right. Yeah, I like it. They were already... We're, Foreign I language film, David. Do we skip that? Yes. They can't even get in our country. <laughs> anyway. Who cares? <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, do you want to do a foreign language film? No, I don't, really think, I don't okay. even know any of those movies. Yeah, neither do I. Adapted okay. screenplay? No. Uh, original screenplay? No. Actress in a supporting role? Yes. All right. Best supporting actress nominees are Viola so wait, Davis in Fences. Supporting Na- actor? Supporting actress, David. Oh, actress. Mm-hmm. So they said. Yeah, come on. Women first. Come on. Um, we got Naomi Harris in Moonlight. Nicole Kidman in Lion. Octavia Spencer in Hidden Figures. Or Michelle Williams in Manchester by the Sea. Interesting. Um, I'm. What was the very first one? It was the Viola Davis. Viola Fences. from Fences, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be Viola Davis. Fences. Um, I'm going to say Octavia Spencer in Hidden Figures. All right. So. All right. Ah, let's see. That's that. close. Um, <clears throat> both of those movies, I think. Have, Only because I've seen that movie. I haven't seen the other ones. Yeah. I, I just, I've heard that Fences is really good. Really, really, really good. I um, heard it's very like, you know. 
Well, a, a lot of these it, movies are very on, Oscar baby. Yeah, they lay, lay it on thick. That's the whole yeah. point. Yeah. It's like all right, actor supporting or uh, actor in a supporting role. We got Marshall Ali in Moonlight. We have Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water. We have Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea. Dave Patel in Lion or Michael Shannon in Nocturnal Animals. I'm going to say Marshall Ali in Moonlight. And I am going to say Dave Dave Patel. He's already won for freaking Slumdog Man. He's not going to win again. Yeah, but he didn't. Did he win? He didn't win the actor in that, did he? I thought, I thought it was. Did. I thought they won Best Picture. Oh really? I thought he won. He's awesome. All I right. really like Dave Patel. He's great He's in Newsroom. Cool. Okay, so I picked Dave Patel and you picked uh, Mashal Ali. In okay, Moonlight. Moonlight. Okay, yeah. that's uh, Cottonmouth. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we got actress in a leading role. We have Isabel Hubert in Ellie. We have Ruth Nega in Loving. We have Natalie Portman in Jackie. Emma Stone in La La Land and Meryl Streep in Florence Foster Jenkins. Mm, it's like all right so i've seen law La La land right yeah and i'm at this point like i've seen enough of the oscars i've seen enough movies that like oscars they love or the the academy they love movies about themselves of course right? they do. and voting those yeah, movies but here's, out. here's what i this, but well hold on, let, me, let, me, let me finish okay go ahead but recently the tone has kind of changed to bringing in a, a more minority into the oscars right that's kind of the joke over the past couple of years um so i don't, I don't it's think a joke that but way. yeah well you know what i mean you know what <laughs> i get what you're saying um, so I, I want to lean Emma Stone in La La Land. Was she good? Yeah. Yeah. Was she Emma Stone? What do you mean? Was she Emma Stone? I mean, is she, what is she, does she do anything different? My, my point being is like, is she just Emma, is she, does she feel like a different character? Yeah. Sure. She doesn't feel like Emma Stone. I don't know what that means, David. No, I've seen that, Emma Stone in the movie no, and she's different than the movies. Like, I don't know. No, she's not. She's the same person in Easy A as she is in freaking zombie, the zombie movie. I forgot she was in Zombie Land. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's the same character. She's the, you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. Like in these movies, it's one of those. It, does the character feel dramatically different from something else that they've played? When I see those trailers, because I haven't seen La La Land, she seems like a singing, happy girl who's hot. One of the movies has she sung in? No, well, no, no, but I'm, okay, I guess yeah, that's true. She hasn't <laughs> sung in any other. I'm gonna say Emma Stone in La La Land. Okay. What are you gonna um say them one more time? Isabel Hubert and Ellie. Ruth Nega in Loving, Natalie Portman in Jackie, Emma Stone in La La Land, or Meryl Streep in Florence Foster Jenkins. Oh, man. Um, I want to say... You know what? I'm going to say... Oh, God, this is hard. I, I want to say Emma Stone because it just feels like that'd be the easiest. By the way, but uh, just real quick, like everyone's like, oh, Hollywood loves the movies about themselves. Yeah, no, duh. Everybody likes stuff about them. Like yeah. that's why people Google themselves, right? Or look up, you know, things about themselves. Everyone loves stuff about themselves. That's silly to even say. Anyways, okay. Um, I am going to stop delaying and I'm going to pick, is it Ruth Naga? She was in- uh, Loving. Yeah, I'm going to pick her. She was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as like this really terrible character. It's kind of funny seeing her nominated for a Best Actress. Crazy. See? Uh, that's okay. my point that's exactly my point look how much she's changed actor in a leading role but uh, by the way the re- one of the reasons i picked that is because that's a all about a court case loving versus virginia oh really yeah it's about uh virginia used to have a um law on the books you can't marry right yeah interracial marriage which is like and it wasn't that long ago by the way this movie like takes place in like, i think it was the 50s yeah it's yeah it's scary yeah we'll get to that yeah later. we got to kill a mockingbird <laughs> later <laughs> okay actor in a leading role we have casey affleck in manchester by the sea Andrew Garfield in Hackshaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Hackshaw. <laughs> Ryan Gosling in La La Land. Viggo Mortensen in Captain Fantastic. I wanted to see that. I know, me too. I heard it was really freaking good. I and then Denzel that. Washington in Fences. Um, for me, this seems pretty obvious. I think it's going to be Ryan Gosling. Everybody says he just kills it in that movie. Plus, Ryan Gosling, I've never thought of... Like, You know what's funny about like the people who've won recently? Like, You had... All right, all right, all right. He won, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's like, really, if you would have told me, the guy who was like, funny thing about high school girls, they keep getting older and I stay the same age. Like, he's going to win best support or best actor in the Oscars? I'd be like, yeah, Vin Diesel's up Yeah, next. well, we got an anti-Semite that's nominated for best director, so. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, I'm going to say Ryan Gosling, though. What's um, yours? La La Land. Come on. I'm going to say... You're going to go with the same I thing? Can't, I can't whitewash this Oscar, right? I got to have a couple. Oh, stop it. <laughs> You're the worst. First of all, you um, picked, uh, you picked the, the... Oh, that's Ali. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to pick... Um, Come on. Who do you think's actually... Andrew gonna... Garfield. Really? I heard of Hacksaw Ridge. is really good. Spider-Man? I really need to watch it. <laughs> all right. Best director. Okay. We Andrew have Damien Garfield, Chazelle Lola. for La La Land. Mel Gibson for Hacksaw Ridge. Barry Jenkins for Moonlight. 
Kenneth Longren that for Manchester by the Sea. Actually, change mine to Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea. You think he'll win, he'll win both? He'll win uh, no, the but, Golden Globe but, in... Didn't he win it, right? He won and the Golden Globe. Dennis uh, Villaview for Arrival. Uh, that's mine. Pick. For Best Director? Yes. Arrival. Best Director will be the... I can't. So it's that. very uncommon that the Best Director doesn't win Best Picture as well. Just saying. It, it will happen this time. Okay. So you're gonna say it should be different, right? I mean, th- there's there's well, something about directing. Directing is a big part of a movie, so yeah, but it's not the only thing. The actors, <laughs> the right. Story, but the director, the screenplay, but the, acting the special is, effects, but all of that is all affected by the director. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, it's managed by the director, right? But that, that doesn't mean he. he but because he, the he, actor is really bad, you blame the director. I no, that I I blame casting sometimes. Yeah, but the director can be like, this actor sucks, we can get a new one. You think directors have that much pull in Hollywood? Mm-hmm. On their movies. You're sadly Some mis- of them. Some of them. You're sadly mistaken, buddy. I'm just saying. They're I, like, the directors no, are very big They're like, oh, this is going to be this movie with this this hunk, right? Why do you think freaking, uh, what's that guy from 300? Gerard Butler got so many movies because he was a good actor? No. no that's my point, dude. Like, the, And you're going to be like, oh, well, I, this is, because here's what's, here, this is the point that I want to make. I don't think there's like a director that wants to make a bad movie. Uh, of think, course not. But I, you know what I'm saying? Like, so like there's this idea of like all these bad movies in Hollywood, right? Like what's going on with Hollywood? There's all these terrible movies. I see this on YouTube, like videos about all these bad movies. And it's like, nobody's coming out to make a bad movie, but like they're also, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an industry that has to make money. So like, yeah, they're going to put famous people that aren't very good actors because people are like, Oh, that person's in this movie. Right. right. Anyways. Anyway, I'm going to pick a La La Land director. Okay. Damien Chazelle. All right. All right. Best picture. Here's By the way, for... the guy who directed Arrival, he did like uh, Sicario. S- yeah, and he did. Which was another... freaking good. Sicario yeah, I need to see movie. that too. Um, okay, so then we have best picture. Best picture. We have Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight. La La Land. I think it's gonna be La La Land too. We can't you know pick what something it... different. We can't pick the same thing. No, come we? on, it'll be fine. It's gotta be La La Land because like. What? You know what? I'm gonna pick Moonlight. You're out of your mind. You're gonna lose. All right, all right. So, <laughs> jeez, man. Well, no, You're I'm just lose. saying. You know, La La Land. From I again, I haven't seen it, but what I've heard about it is it feels like you know one of those like we 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 review Honestly, singing you, in the rain. If, if I were to put money on it, I would probably say La La Land. But you're putting jelly like bean said, on it. I'm putting jelly bean on it. But I want to say Moonlight because I really do think they're going to pick the. Sad movie that has the periods over three periods of a character and the struggle, yeah, it's kind of like it's yeah. like classic, yeah, Oscar movie. Yeah, not but to say La La that Land it's a bad classic movie. too. I mean, I, I, I really want to see. Movie. I really want to see a lot of these movies. Like I've seen Arrival, I've seen Hidden Figures, I've seen La La Land, and that's the only ones I've seen on this list. Yeah, I still need. I, I haven't seen a lot of these movies, but I think there were a couple of theaters selling tickets where you could see like all the nominees over like two days for like twenty five bucks. I'm like that's a pretty or thirty five bucks. I'm like that's a pretty good deal. Well, they it's say like when these get nominated, they get a big bump. All mm-hmm. the movies get, and some of them get re released in theaters for right. the bump too. Yeah, more mainly after Golden Globes and then heading between into the Golden Oscars Globes and then yeah. All right, so we got our picks in. Got our picks in. Let us know what you guys think. Um. Well, you'll know. So how are we going to do it if none of us win? We just both eat a jelly bean? No, no. For each one we get wrong, we got to eat a jelly bean. Oh, okay. Random. So it could be good, could be bad. Oh, that's going to be fun, David. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so now that we got that done, let's uh, move on to top 100 movies of all time. This week, we have number 83. It's a 1962 action-adventure movie, <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird. Action-adventure. I'm sorry. It's a crime drama. Drama. Uh, it is not rated. What? Rated X, ladies and gentlemen. Rated no. X. Now, when, when did it come out? 1962. Apparently, the MPA wasn't a thing back then. Probably for good reason. Um, okay, so <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird, starring um, uh, Gregory Peck as Atticus Finch. This is the classic uh, Harper Lee uh, novel. Um, Everyone's seen this, right? Well, I, mean, in high school. I don't know if everybody... I don't know. We're this living in Trump's America things. now, man. Come on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> kidding. That's like the fourth time we've done that. No, but... Uh, You've um, done that. You've done it, too. Don't, don't, don't hate. Come on. Um, so, this... Sad. <laughs> wrong <laughs> anyways um <laughs> it was funnier when you were just dressing Sad up period. as him anyways uh <laughs> so uh the movie or the movie is an adaptation of the classic novel um which uh takes place in alabama uh i forget the 
um, the particular small town and I believe it's Alabama. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's in the South. Basically, I think in like the fifties is when this is taking place. Depression era South. Oh, so, so even the twenties, the thirties. So, uh, 1930s, Alabama, small town. And it, uh, focuses on a few characters, um, uh, including, uh, Scout and Jem, who are the, uh, s- uh, s- older son and younger daughter of Atticus Finch, um, who's, uh, there's a, it's, there's multiple storylines that are going on in this movie. Uh, one of them has to deal with uh, discrimination in the South during mm-hmm. the Depression time period. Um, another one has to deal with like childhood, um, uh, almost like a um, God. Goonies is really the only thing. I kind of right? right. It's like the scary house down the street that nobody. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like a Goosebumps novel. It's kind of yeah, yeah. there, so. There's this this whole thing with the two kids um, uh, going down the street with this creepy uh, kind of. Uh, old not old but this creepy house with like this weird person lives in it uh boo radley uh which and, i don't know i did not know was robert duvall man yeah it's it weird so at the end weird. of the movie yeah. to see robert duvall young, young young very very young robert duvall anyways um so uh, the m- movie intertwines the kind of the sense of childhood um innocence with backdrop of racial discrimination and bigotry in the 1930s in southern Alabama, right? Mm-hmm. And so you have a character, Atticus Finch, who is their father. He is an attorney, um, and he is the white hat. No pun. In, well, that's terrible to say in this example. <laughs> 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 not that white hat. He is literally the character who is the, not the white good. hood. But yeah, yeah. White hat, not hood. Uh, but he is he is uh, appointed to uh, defend a uh, a black man who has been um, accused of rape, accused of raping a white woman. Um, and obviously in the South, nobody wants to, no one's going to take his case. And so he is appointed by the judge in the, it's like a public defender kind of thing. Yeah. Almost like a pub. Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Essentially a public defender. Um, and he has, um, his sense of, um, law and order and everyone deserves the, you know, uh, regardless of yeah, their due process of law and all that thing, despite their color. And so he's like the, he's the character, he's the good guy. Right. And so. But, the goodest of guys. Right. And so, and, and another point of the whole movie is that um, Jem and Scout's mom is not in the picture. Something happened to her where she died when they were like, one of the kids was six and one of them was like two. Um, and so that's really what the, the, the book is about. Um, again, that kind of childhood innocence and, and wonder and um, kind of, you know, the Goonies thing, right? Like this little caper that these kids go on. Uh, backdrop on this really serious, scary uh, uh, racism, right? Yeah, and you see the movie like as adults, and you're like, oh my god, this is happening. But you also see the movie through Scout, and Scout's like, what do you mean this is wrong? Like, why? Did, why is he guilt? That doesn't make any sense to me. Why would like, you treat him differently? Exactly. Why are they mean to him? Because she hasn't Dad? seen that stuff because she's a kid, and then it's like Atticus is like, well, it's not really how things work. And the know? movie does, and the book. This book is you know fantastic. If you haven't read it, read the book and then watch the movie. But like the, the everyone reads the book in um, most English classes in high school. Like I said, I remember school. reading the book and then watching the movie. In right, high and so it's interesting though to watch because I another you know uh, book that I you read when you're in school and then you can reread it as like animal farm i think we've brought Mm -hmm. this up like you can read it from a perspective of like a a young student who has assigned it and you're like okay i kind of get it and then you read it as an adult and you're like jesus christ like this book is way heavier than it ever like why did they let kids read this crap like not crap but you know what i mean like there's some heavy stuff in this this book and in this movie um so anyways with that all being said let's review it we don't have to do the thumbs up because we're we're all audio so one two three thumbs up for me thumbs up for you yeah yeah Yeah, two thumbs up i mean the the thing that we talked about uh, now we'll get into spoiler territory if you haven't seen the movie but (laughs) i like that we say that i know i know i do it every week um everyone remembers the 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 trial scene right which right. is like literally like one eighth like of the, the movie. That's like the core of the movie. Yeah, and but that's it's like what a, the big, the biggest yeah, part of the movie is about. Yeah, but it's like twenty minutes of this yeah. two hour, two and a half hour movie. This movie's long. Yeah. Um, the movie feels like it's a book turned to a movie because there's characters that are introduced for like two seconds and then are not talked about or done anything they're with gone, them. Yeah. Right. And so it's like okay, this was just because people read the book and they're like, you have to put that character in because everybody likes that character. Um, but. You know what this movie does and the book does, I guess, well to some extent is like it's 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 poignant, but it's not preachy, if yeah. that makes sense. It's not yeah, like yeah. beat you over the head with like racism is bad. Yeah. It's like this subtlety and it's also like um, but it's also like the unfairness, right? No, I, and I noted like the only note that I put like while watching this movie, because I remember seeing this movie and again, like I'm mainly it's the court part, but like. 
this movie is sadly relevant today. And like this movie was freaking made in the sixties. And when was the book even? I think the book came out shortly before because it was popular as soon as it came out. Oh, okay. So yeah, the fact that this is because that this movie and like the what happens in the court case and all that stuff and like evidence like does it's obviously it matters more today but it's like a lot of stuff is still happening these days and it's just it's sadly this movie's still relevant and it's still one of those movies like if you haven't seen it you need to just freaking see this movie well one thing i'll say too when you first the movie pulls up on like the the intro credits it's like amazing cinematography like the way like the movie is shot in a very um interesting way Mm -hmm. um and it's it's also got like that classic i I know i keep bringing up goonies but like there's a part where like boo radley's dad shows up and is is uh putting the concrete over the knot in the tree Mm -hmm. and they like zoom in on his face like the creepy ah Uh, like it feels like uh. right it's like and and all of that is almost superfluous unless you take the understanding that the perspective of the kids at the end of like why is why is no one want to you know be nice to boo or to be uh, nice to the what's his name Tom Robinson? See, right, right. This, this is why we're recording audio. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, yeah, this movie is sadly still relevant. Everyone needs to go watch it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, the, the obviously we always jo- I joked about it on the last one. This is like the whole reason everybody who wants to become an attorney says, "Oh, is this movie that made me want to become an attorney?" Yeah, but, yeah. but the, the but I mean, it's kind of the, answer, no. Right? But the trial scene with Gregory Peck is freaking amazing. It's phenomenal. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. that moment of like chicka chung, right? It's like <gasps> and the part where it's like. Watching it now, it's like, oh, of course he's not going to be guilty, right? Because, I mean, there's yeah. no evidence or everything Gregory Peck said. It's a guilty. It's like, oh, yeah, this is in the 30s. It doesn't matter, yeah, right? None and of it matters. I, right. But, okay, the ending of the movie, I don't get. I get the whole, you know, why why get Boo Radley in trouble? Because it's like to killing a, it's like killing a mockingbird. There's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no reason for it. Yeah. But, like, by the way, this guy, like, killed, he made some guy stab it. Like, I get self-defense, but, like. I don't know. Just a weird. It's like a weird. The whole point of the movie is like he, sh- he shot the guy that was attacking the, attacking the kid, right? No, he made he struggled with him and he made him stab himself. That's right. That's right. Right. But my point is, is like this whole the whole point of the trial was like law and order should prevail. Right. Oh, here we go. Law and order should <laughs> prevail, and like it doesn't. Like it's yeah. like, and I'm like, okay, I don't really understand the concept of the movie at the end. Well, it just it's again, it just kind of goes to show that. That sometimes it doesn't really matter. It's all about preconceived notions of different types of people, and that doesn't matter how much reason or how yeah. much truth. Right? It's fake, fake news. Exactly. <laughs> this is this is exactly what we're doing audio. You want to be on this podcast? Oh, now you're gonna be shy. Wait, there it is. <laughs> <It'll>... <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's wrap it up. Okay. Till next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>